Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. You've seen me do videos on PowerDirector, which is a uh, video editing program from CyberLink. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about PhotoDirector, which is a photo editing program also from CyberLink. <laughs> You may have seen the videos I've done on PowerDirector, which is a video editing program from CyberLink. Today I'm going, to do, I'm going to cover a different program from CyberLink. This is a photo editing program, and it does kind of the same things as Lightroom and Photoshop and some of these other programs that you can access on the web. Uh, but this is essentially an, a, a review of PhotoDirector, but I'm not going to do it by just you know pointing out different things. What I'm going to do is show you some photos and how I would go about editing them in this program so you can really see how simple this program is to use. It's extremely well laid out and it's easy to use and I think that's really the takeaway I want you to get from this video. So we're actually going to pull in some pictures and just walk through editing them. The screen you're looking at right now is the opening screen for PhotoDirector. Well, the first time you actually install and open the program, there are some sample photographs that will be included in here. I've deleted those. Uh, so this is just an empty library uh, that, that uh, I'm about to add some pictures to. We've got many uh, buttons across the top here, library, adjustment, guided, edit, create, and print. And we're going to be touching on all of those at one time or another today. So let's start. We're in library and uh, we're going to import pictures. So I click on import and hit photos. And here are the pictures that I want to bring in. You'll notice that four of them are NEF files and uh, the other three are JPEGs. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a ping and the other two are JPEGs. But the point I want you to take from this is <clears throat> that PhotoDirector does edit these type of files obviously, but also it will work with uh, raw images like an, a NEF file, which is a raw image for a Nikon camera. So anyway, I'm going to click and select all of those and open them. Now I see I'm, I'm in the photo or import window and I've got two choices, basic and advanced. Well, basic, you know, you just select the pictures you want and import and it's done. In advanced, you can do a little bit more. You can <clears throat> apply, uh, presets and sort of other things on the import. You can enter copyright information. What I like to do is add tags. Uh, you know, if you have a thousand pictures in your library and you want to find a certain group of those pictures, the only way you can do it is by having tags assigned to them. So as you import them, you assign a tag. And in this case, test pictures is a, a good tag for this. So I'll go ahead and import. And now we've got the pictures here. So the first picture, let's start with this one here. And uh, this is a, a nice scenic picture. Let's see, I can do this. You get a little better look at it. Uh, it's a nice scenery shot, but it's kind of flat, kind of plain. And what I want to do is pump up the color. So we're talking about basic uh, image adjustments to a, a photograph, which is probably the lion's share of what you'll do in a program like this. So what would we do? Well, we're going to start with the Adjustment tab. And if you're familiar at all with Lightroom, <clears throat> you'll see that this looks a lot like uh, Lightroom. You've got all kinds of different sliders and checkboxes and other options of ways you can adjust this picture in almost every way imaginable. Some of them are, are real basic. Others are very you know, detailed and more advanced, but uh, I'm just going to quickly go through and adjust this picture with a couple of settings, and so you can see the difference you can make very easily when using this program. If I come down here, I've got brightness. What I want to do is I really want to expand the uh, contrast uh, on this this thing, and so what I'm going to do is slide up my brightness a little bit, my brightest setting, 
and you, I'm, I'm following the histogram here slide this up a little bit leave the mids alone for right now and then I'm going to bring my darks down and I'll take the darkness even down more and now you can see I've, I've spread out my histogram uh, basically across the whole range of the image and you can see just by making that one change the colors are really popping more uh, especially dark down here in the in the water and the in the grass now I can come down here under tinge and uh, I can adjust some more things here if I wanted to adjust make improve increase all the all the colors saturation I would slide up saturation you can see it it, it touches everything I'm going to start by going with vibrance which really hits more your blues and greens and pull it up a little bit more and now you can see those blues really popping on the water uh, I might try this one just to see what it does on the, the mountains because there's morning light on the mountains so let's see here okay I'll leave it like that you may not want to you know saturate the colors as much in your images again this is just a demo of what it does uh, and you can make your own choices for it another cool thing that this has and this is also you'll, something you'll find in Lightroom but uh, is lens correction um, if you enable correction uh, it will adjust for specific lenses uh, they have uh, presets for different different lenses that are popular and uh, it will adjust based on the characteristics and the uh, abnormalities or whatever for those different lenses so I'll, I'm going to choose Nikon and this is a 10 millimeter f2.8 uh, lens that's not what I was shooting with let's come down here to the 24 to 85 lens now if you if you were watching that that would have changed very slightly again it's not a big change but it just adjusts to correct for uh, the the effects that each different kind of lens has and there's all different brands and all kinds of different lenses you can choose from you know you can fix chromatic aberration you can add or remove vignette if you need to do that you can adjust fisheye distortion if you're using a wide angle lens uh, there's all kinds of things you can do here I'm gonna stop here just this is just the first picture and this shows you how you can color correct using nothing more than the adjustment tool <music>
well in this case I want to make that orange drone pop out against the background everything else will be black and white but that orange drone will, will really pop out and to do that all I have to do is pick color splash now I choose this selector and I come up here and click on the orange that I want to save and it automatically takes out all the other colors and leaves the uh, body of the drone in color it also picks up a little bit of the uh, glowing light on one of the the motors um, so that's a really cool effect that you can use to to make a, a an interesting uh, photograph out of uh, something that may not be quite as fancy but by selectively pulling out a color you really draw the attention to it now you can also play with that color let's say i wanted to see what that drone looks like if it was green or blue if i pull this slider down now it's green and i can pull it keep going and now it looks now you know what this drone looks like if it's blue so uh if you want to do color replacements in photo director this is this is a great way to do it now as i as i clean, leave this little area it's asking if i want to save the changes i say yes and now it's actually made a copy of the original file the original file is is unaffected but uh the it's made a copy of what we did there so again the the the, the guided thing is a whole bunch of d little uh, effects and changes that you can do that are basically automated so even if you don't know anything about photo editing and you want to mess with pictures this is a great way to do it the guided tab is your friend <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the library. And now we're going to play with uh, this picture right here. And I'm going to show you a couple things on uh, some more tabs here. Let's start, let's go with the adjustments. You should always start with the adjustments and do the things that you want to do with the pictures first and then go to these other creative uh, tabs to do different things. So again, we can, I can pull up the brightness like that I can pull down the darkness a little bit that's e that's even fine just the way it is I just want to make the colors nice and punchy uh, for the effect that I'm about to do so I'm done there for with my adjustments um, now let's go to guided and again it even c comes up and tells you that it's going to be working on a copy of your image so it just gives you a heads up on that all right, we're back here in the guided tab. Now I'm going to click on sky replacement. And putting in a different sky is as easy as picking one of the choices. Now you see the, the sky is completely changed. The drone is flying away. It looks great. Now I can put it on a sunlight or sunset. And that's what the drone looks like. You can put it in outer space if you want. Uh, or a dark and stormy night. You can just click the different backgrounds uh, and swap things out just like that so again that's just another example of what you can do with these with the guided tab uh, and, it, and it really works well now if if you it depends on the picture you're working with obviously I chose a, an easy one with the all sky to you know for the sake of brevity in in this demonstration but uh, even if you have you know land here and sky up here it will still swap out that sky portion of your image and leave the ground the ground unaffected so it's very powerful uh, little pro little tool in this program <laughs> so I'm back to my original image now let's go in here to the edit screen All right. This, if you used to, if you're used to using Photoshop, this 
should look familiar to you. Here's where you can add layers to your image. Uh, you can do things like uh, cropping and uh, putting text and, and drawing shapes on the stuff. There's a ton of different things you can do in this, in this uh, window. The editing is probably the most powerful uh, image modification tool in this program. In this example, I'm going to take this picture. Let's say I wanted to make this a, a thumbnail for a YouTube video. <clears throat> so I want the picture in the background and I want to put some text on here and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to, uh, to this icon here, which is the shape tool. And there are all kinds of choices. Um, I could pick the color. The color is, let's make it a little bit darker, yellow. Okay, that's good. And uh, I've got it set for rounded corners. And uh, I can pick different shape modes. This is creating a new shape later as I add here. So let's draw this box. I draw the box out. And now it just puts my icon on there. Now I can take this thing and move it around. And see that little pink line there? That tells me I have that centered on my image. So that's a, a very helpful little device to help you line things up properly as you work on your images. So I'm going to drop that there. Now let's put some text on it. Oh, and over here you can see here's my background and it added a new layer. So as I go on, I could put a whole bunch of layers on this doing all these different things. And if I want to see, oh, what does it look like without this layer? I click on that eye and it hides it. So that's a, a nice way to help you kind of A, B test different things that you're doing, see which one you like better. So let's now add some text to this. And uh, the color is red. It says it's, uh, what is that, 300 text size. Um, I don't, it says pixels. I don't. I guess that would be pixels because this is a pretty large image. So anyway, let's draw a text box on here. And let's give this drone a name. Tell Evo 2 Pro. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've got the, the red lettering with a, a, a dark blue border on it. I can, I can take off the border if I want. I can uh, put a drop shadow on there if I'd like. Increase my shadow size. So you can see there's now a drop shadow on there. Or, let me select it again. I get rid of the shadow, put the border back on. Uh, this time I'll, I'll choose uh, a, a, a light blue border just to make it stand out here and hit OK. And I want it maybe less, less obnoxious of a border. So you can see you can change, you can change all the different facets of the uh, text that you put on there. It's not quite centered up, so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to move him around. And now you can see he's centered up. Uh, with the crosshatch of the uh, pink line, so I've got it perfectly centered now with my with my uh, background element there, the the shape. So today you can see that this is a very simple way to uh, take an image and add layers to it, add elements to it. You could incorporate more pictures or or other text or whatever you want, and drop them in on your uh, photo very quickly using the uh, edit tab. There's one other thing I want to show you uh, with the edit window or the edit tab, uh, but to do that I need to turn off the other layers here and I just want the background. Something that's really cool that you can do in this program is cut a piece of your image out so you can do things like put it on a, a transparent background or you can uh, add it to another photograph. Uh, and that's, that's what I'm going to show you here. So if I come up here to this, it is the Select Area to Tool. If I click on that, one thing I'll point out here, this is pretty cool, on a lot of these menus, menus as you're learning the program, it, there are links to help tutorials. So 
you're not familiar with this tool, you want to learn more about it, you click here and it'll open up a page on Cyberlink's website that gives you instructions on using this tool. So that's a really nice little feature they have on a lot of the different menus in this program. Anyway, what we want to use this tool is to select an area of the image. Uh, specifically, we're going to select the sky behind the drone and then delete it out so all we have left is the drone. And there are a lot of ways you can do it. With these, you can draw areas on your screen, and that will be your selection. Uh, and then, you, you know, you can do a rectangle or an ellipse. You can do a kind of a freehand draw. I find these tools to be helpful. <clears throat> the manual selection, I can just basically just scribble an area on there, and it selects it. Let me deselect that. This one here is a smart selection. So if I click here, it's actually uh, selecting areas around the uh, area, the lines of contrast. So uh, this is all pretty much the same color. So as I'm selecting, it, it grabs all of that until it hits a point like the part of the drone that's markedly different in, in terms of color and then it uh, uh, stops the selection there. That's pretty handy too. I'm going to deselect that. And then there's this one, which is, this is the, your basically your, your magic wand here. So if I click here, it selects everything until it gets to those lines. It grabs all that kind of stuff. Now, you can see down here, it missed a little bit more. So I can come up here and grab this rectangle and draw a shape like that. And now it's selected everything. There's another spot down here. So I got that selected. So you can see it's real easy to make a selection in this program using just different assortments of these uh, uh, tools here under the selection menu. Now that I've got all that selected, if I hit delete, now it's all gone. Uh, in the background. Now, I missed a little spot, didn't I? So let's go back here to the magic wand. And I'm going to delete again. And now that spot's gone too. All right, now what I want to do is edit and select all. So now I've got the whole thing selected. And I'm going to edit, copy. Now let's go over to this picture right here. Do I want to save that? Yes, we'll save that. And we're, now we've got this picture here. Well, let's put the drone in. Now we've got that nice clean drone that we cut out in here. It's pretty big for a drone, so we can s just grab one of the corners and make it smaller. And now we and, and now we basically made it look like the drone is flying there with the guy as he's riding or jumping on a skateboard. <laughs> We've got two other menus up here, <clears throat> and I'm just going to touch on them. Create. Do I want to save that? Yes, we'll save that. Create is a way to do things like making a slideshow. So you can, like if you had a bunch of pictures in here, you could, in, in, this, in this screen, you could just add them all there and have it, you know, set the duration. You could put in uh, background music and then export it and create a little video slideshow with it. You could also pull a video clip in here and have it go through and take snapshots of, uh, of frames from every one second, three seconds, five seconds, whatever, you know, different uh, time period that you want. And uh, it would capture still images from your video. So that's something I do on occasion. I, am, I shoot a video and then I'm asked to provide still images from the video. And so this is, that's a really effective way to automate that, have it go and capture the things, and then I can pick and choose what I want to keep. So that's the Create tab. On the print screen, uh, along here on the left side is the layout area. And you, this is a uh, setup for a paper you know, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Uh, it's orientation is portrait. You could change that to landscape if you want. And currently it's set up to, with a whole bunch of little one inch by one inch boxes. And each one of these boxes, you drag a picture in there and drop it. And that's how small the picture would print out. 
you can also come over here and change it well let's go with two and a half by three and a half inch size photographs well you can click and drag your pictures in drop them in there and it, it will print those now this is obviously I would want to rotate these pictures before I do it so it would fill up this whole area but you get the idea this is a way to print multiple pictures on one page with managed with managed sizes for each picture and uh, so it, it makes it a lot more efficient in terms of using your printing paper which is really expensive stuff anymore so that's that's the uh, print tab on this and then obviously you can do things like you can put watermarks on in there you can set your print settings choose your printer and then print and you're good to go so let's talk about buying photo director you can do it one of two ways it's the same as power director and that is you can you can pay a, a small amount every month for a subscription based based version or you can buy the, the program outright um, the difference is that with the subscription pro version you're getting you're getting constant updates and additions to the software like uh, for example if you had 365 you would get more of these photo effects every month they come out with new ones that you could download and install there are templates uh, for different things that you can download and install and those are all free they're all included with the, the subscription or you can buy it just straight out right and you don't get those constant updates but you own the program you pay one price and then you're not on that subscription model that a lot of people don't like to do this is the uh, the pricing for it photo director ultra that's the buy it one time you know pay once and you own it uh, regularly it's about a hundred bucks Right now it's on sale for 75 bucks. Uh, they do sales a lot. So if you're not getting it by February 21st, check the price. It may be on sale again. Um, or you can buy, if you get PowerDirector and PhotoDirector both, you get them both for $169. And that's a one-time one -time price. Uh, otherwise, if you do these, the annual subscription, the, the PhotoDirector 365, regularly is regularly is $55 per year this right now it's on sale for $41 uh, which is you know $3 and 42 cents a month which is really really cheap for a very capable photo editing program you can also go with the director suite which includes power director photo director it also includes color director which is a color correction and grading program with a lot more capabilities than what you find in power director and uh, for that's for video and you can also get uh, you also will get audio director which is a, an audio recording and modification program so it really covers the whole gambit of things with the the director suite uh, and that costs 129 dollars 130 bucks for a year regularly right now that's on sale for 97 dollars or eight dollars and eight cents a month so that's a really good price you can see how this program is really easy to use to do a lot of the different types of things you want to do um, I find that uh, you know I've been using Lightroom and Photoshop for years so I'm very, you know, I'm experienced with those programs, but I'm finding that just jumping over to this program and doing some of these same things uh, is extremely easy and very quick to learn too. So uh, I think I think that speaks very well for this for this program, particularly when you think it's a hundred dollar program to buy it outright. Obviously, you can tell I'm I'm a believer in this program. I I owned. Adobe Premiere. I owned Sony Vegas at the time that I decided to do video tutorials and I went out and looked at a bunch of different programs and I chose PowerDirector because of its capabilities, because of its ease of use and because of its price. Uh, I learned after doing that that this program, these programs are always being updated as well so uh, you get a lot of value when you buy a CyberLink product and that's why I'm, I'm very happy to uh, cover them on my channel and, and show them to you and, and uh, offer 
offer uh, advice and tutorials on them as well. So what do you think about photo director? Is this something you're interested in? Well, if it is, click the link in the description below and that'll take you to Cyberlink's website where you can purchase it or you can uh, set up the monthly subscription and download the program and get it going for you. You can also download, download a trial version of this program uh, for free and test it out on your own before you actually make the investment and uh, purchase the program yourself. If you would, I would appreciate a, a thumbs up if you found this information to be helpful. I encourage you to subscribe because I will be doing more uh, tutorials on PowerDirector and probably some tutorials on PhotoDirector if, if I get requests for those. So you don't want to be missing out on, on getting notified for those. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.